again. Looking at some of the comments to the video which I published this morning on the subject of anti-Semitism, I honestly wonder if some of those posting here are not really sock puppets of mine because they raise points which make my case for me without any effort at all on my part. Some viewers who have skimmed through the comments might have noticed the name Fritz Haber cropping up a number of times. Who is this person and why would anybody think him relevant to anti-Semitism? This is a fascinating point. Haber was a Jew without whose work many billions of people in the world would either have starved to death or never have been born. He is, without doubt, one of the greatest men in the history of the world. But why is it that hardly anybody other than scientists have heard of him? And why on earth should anti-Semites be so keen to brandish his name about? By the end of the 19th century, the world was increasingly bedeviled by widespread famines, which killed millions of people at a time. In the 1870s, for example, a famine in China uh, caused more than 10 million deaths and at about the same time, 5 million people starved to death in India. Essentially, the problem was that the population of the world was growing, but agriculture could not produce enough food for the increasing numbers of people, hence the famines. Crops need nitrogen to grow, if they're to be strong and healthy, that is, and give a good yield for food. And the only source in the 19th century was animal droppings and so on, organic matter used, uh, manure. By the end of the century, a crisis had been reached. Uh, increased medical advances and so on meant that there were more people than ever and less food to feed them on. Fritz Haber was a German chemist who realised that there was unlimited nitrogen in the air around us. Suppose this could be captured and used for fertiliser. He developed a process which allowed nitrogen from the air to be captured and combined with hydrogen to make ammonia. This was the harbour process and all fertilisers used today are a result. Without these fertilisers the world would quickly starve. It was the single most useful invention of the 20th century. And it's been estimated that roughly 40% of the world's population would not be alive today had Harbour not found a way of using nitrogen from the air to increase massively the yield of crops. Well, what has this got to do with anti-Semitism, you ask? And why should anti-Semites have been busily posting Fritz Harbour's name on this channel this morning? Although a Jew, Harbour had become something of an icon for a certain breed of anti-Semitism for the following reason. Although a Jew, Fritz Haber was a very fiercely patriotic German. He said that in peacetime a chemist belongs to the world, but in wartime he belongs to his country. This is of course a refutation of the traditional idea of the Jew as owing no loyalty to the country in which he lives, but we'll leave that for now. Just as he had previously used his genius to save lives, now Harbour set out to find a way to kill enemy soldiers. He did this by developing poison gases to be used on the battlefield. Not that the British were slouches at this either. The Germans carried out the first gas attack in April 1915 at Ypres and the British then used it at Luz in September of that same year. Now comes the part which anti-Semites enjoy. After the war, Harbour headed an institute developing new technology for agriculture and as part of this produced a hydrogen cyanide gas which could be used as an insecticide. The trade name for this was Zyklon. 
This was the gas used in Auschwitz, and some of Harbour's own relatives died by being gassed with Zyklon. Fritz Harbour was not only responsible for saving billions of lives, his work was also used to harm people as well, both in the First and Second World Wars. This is a fascinating subject from a philosophical point of view, man's nature which can work for the good of humanity and also to cause injury and death. But it's a struggle we're all engaged in constantly, our impulse to do good, matched against our more primitive desire to harm our enemies. In other words, this is not a specifically Jewish thing. This is in the part of human nature. It's what the religious people used to call the old Adam in us, as a good and bad contend within our souls. Anti-Semites wave Harbour's name about, though, for a different reason because they find something amusing about the fact that it was a Jew who developed an insecticide spray which was later used in the Holocaust. I suppose that if you have a certain sense of humour, this may indeed cause a chuckle, possibly. For most of us, though, Fritz Haber is remembered as the man whose invention saved countless lives which would otherwise have been lost to famine. I haven't given any references, uh, as I usually do, because his name is very widely known. Um, if anyone's interested, the Wikipedia pages about Fritz Haber and also about his connection with Zyklon B and fertilisers. You can see him in the um, thumbnail to this video.